¿Qué onda, loquitos? I have to, have to, have to talk about this one film. I feel like I've been searching my whole life for. This year, I want to give credence to more Mexican, Chicano, or Latino movies that allow for room for all societies enveloped. You know, I've recently begun trying to get into some Chicano artwork. I just finished watching that uh, documentary by Carlos Almaraz uh, called Playing with Fire on Netflix. I was thinking about purchasing one of his artworks. Pretty pricey though, but I'm interested. That being said, There's a lot that goes into his philosophical dynamics, not just the stipulation of culture and identity, but more so individualism and collectivism, humanitarianism, and utilitarianism. A lot of stuff that I'm interested in. So I think it's important for me to keep my eyes open. You know, um, I got a lot of dislikes on Born in East LA, and I could see how some people could consider it to be problematic for me to say that it's not the best movie, I've had many discussions with many Latinos in the past few months on the basis of uh, density, right? Density in Hollywood. What does it mean? Am I allowed to ridicule a culturally favored movie? I'm not here to say that uh, Mexican or Latino or Chicano are two or three different things or that they're the same thing. I'm here to talk about the fact that Mexico has just removed their trust for cinema, y the cine. So we have to start worrying about Mexican cinema here. I think it's important considering somebody like Guillermo del Toro or Anaí Bruno was supported by the Mexican government. I also think of movies like Relic that was supported by uh, Australia. Or I also think of movies like Kilometro 31, which was actually supported by Fida Cine. I mean, just imagine. That movie wouldn't have been created if it was 2021. So I think it's important for us to support Mexican cinema as well as small cinema. Many, 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 many Disney movies and generic series will come out on Netflix and Amazon Prime. But, you know, keep your eyes open for things that have less funding or a stronger design. Thank you! Dad, you made it! Okay, so Zoot Suit. I mean, shit. This movie is king. It's king shit. Hey. I'm from Song Cool, eh? Hey. Well, the starting point, I mean, you have Ijo as the Pachuco. We up by the Sailor Man. Huh? Come on. I may be a bit biased here because I, I feel like I'm a little bit infatuated with movies that have plays in them. Like Moulin Rouge. The show must go on. Or Les Miserables. I... Now where did this bitch come from? Synecdoche, New York. I don't intend for part six to take as long as this one did, but I guess we'll see what happens. And even movies that are, are like plays, like Little Shop of Horrors in Greece. You'll be a dentist. You have a talent for causing pain. But I feel like this one holds a different kind of value, especially considering the metaphysical aspect, or rather the meta aspect of the play occurring within the movie. Uh, not as a portion of the movie that is played that way. So in Synecdoche, New York, play is within the movie, but rather Zutsu, the play is the movie, which is really cool. By the way, did you guys see that movie? Uh, I'm thinking of ending things. That is the most doomer movie I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it's, it's so lethargic. What? Did you say something? I don't think so. Weird. It was aiming for the ambiance of nothingness. It achieved it in a great regard. Charlie Kaufman is always amazing. His writing style is, he might as well just write poetry. The man is great at writing. People are starving. They may not know it because they're being fed mass produced garbage. I already am eating from the trash can all the time. Well, I got sidetracked there. First off, the man who wrote Zutu is Luis Miguel Valdez, also director of La Bamba. And, and the main actor, Henry, is played by his brother. You know, Luis Valdez, developed a fascination with puppet shows at the age of 12. I feel like I'm missing something here, you know? Hodorowsky also developed a fascination with puppet puppeteering 
You know, in my youth, my mom Miranda used to say, I can't play with puppets. Not because they're for girls, but because she didn't like girls playing with them either. But because um, dolls are from the devil and they come alive at night. And she hated dolls, so we couldn't watch Sesame Street or Fraggle Rock, the Muppets. The Crypt keep us in the house with a groove that's nasty and mean, like the effects of a guillotine. Any of that shit scared her. Not sure, but dolls and claymation were her two scariest things. Yeah. And enough about me. Let's talk about the movie. Suit suit, come on, man. It follows Henry, Enrique Henry Leva's story about the arrest for the sleep, Sleepy Lagoon murder. The story goes as follows. Henry was in Lover's Lane with Doran, his girlfriend at the time, when a group of Downing boys came by to beat him up. So Doran and Henry decided to call on the 38th Street for help. Once they arrived at the ranch, there was no one to be found. And throughout the film, we see the Pachuco get inside Henry's head, sometimes offering him an out or an in to his situation. At times he is wrong, and other times he's right. I have read papers which happen to be the representation of this godly boca, also known as the Obsidian Smoky Mirror, the representative of darkness or moon energy. The warrior within can be found within the Obsidian Mirror. If you remember from our previous review of El Topo, the Obsidian Mirror is said to be the only true reflector, since it consists of only one material. Well, back to the movie. So then they heard the sounds of a party and decided to head towards it. Once they got there, a fight broke out amongst the 38th Street and the Delgadios. Fight ensued and lasted about 10 minutes, after which Jose Diaz was murdered. The police began an investigation and about 600 kids were taken into custody. 22 defendants were eventually put on trial for the murder of Jose Diaz. So the movie follows a case as well as the appeal. I can't give too many spoilers since I really, I really, really want each and every one of you to watch this movie. This movie is more of an experience than a work of art. The way I experience this movie will most likely be different than you. For example, when the father says things like, Chicano. Haven't I told you not to use that word? It means you're trash. I already am eating. You're Mexicanos. All the time. Mexicanos. It really resonated with how I was raised. My mama Rande was very, very biased against the word Chicano. She thought you were Mexican, so Mexicans speak Spanish. My grandfather was highly Americanized, so he learned English but she would say, do not speak that language around me. So I think I may come from a different generation on the basis that I was raised by my grandparents. And I can't think vacanza italiana enough. The recommendation really helped me see multiple perspectives. I liked Boulevard Nights. It wasn't eye-opening though. Zoot Suit was. It changed my beliefs around the words. I'm a post-structuralist at heart, you know, the idea of words intuitively make me nervous you know because then somebody can say that chicano means something to them and i can say that chicano doesn't mean doesn't mean anything like that to me and we can have a rebuttal based on a system that could have actually created us to be united so i tend to be one who rather wants to deconstruct words but it's movies like this that help me see a layer behind the word a little bit better so many movies fail to encapsulate the experience of eating Chicano as well as this movie. There's the part where each one of the members of the 38th Street that is on the court is asked to stand up because the jury cannot distinguish them from each other. The Bachuco decides to make a joke out of it, making it like silly, but also kind of insane. And I think you can only laugh at certain things. If you don't, you can't move forward. Something about forgiveness here. And the movie ends with the audience being allowed to decide, you know, decide Henry Levas's future. I just want to say, 2021, I need to be a little more open. So if you guys have recommendations, I'm all ears. Like the Latino at the end of this film being allowed to decide. But I think we must consider, just like Malcolm X said to, Once you and I go into business, we own and operate at least the businesses in our community. What we will be doing is developing a situation wherein we will actually be able to create employment for the people in the community. We also must remember that Chicano is not alone. The Chicano is a community. And with that, I have to say hasta mañana, locos. Take it off the table. Agree. Perhaps I'm not interesting. But I am the only thing I have to offer. 
and I want to offer something. 